confidence interval. I'll do one more thing before the break. Because we have taken one thing for granted so far in our hypothesis test talk, and we have to realize that that's not always given to us for granted. I call it hypothesis test with alternatives. Actually, what we just did also had alternatives. We just didn't uh, sort of talk about it. Now we talk about it. What we have done so far, and it is possible to discuss hypothesis testing with without focusing too much on the alternative. There is actually a strong scientific debate and fight uh, between some of the founders. There was and there still are with some of the, um, there are a couple of founders of statistics. One is called uh, Sir Ronald Fisher, the other guy is called Carl Pearson. You Google them, they're in really interesting pro People, these were people that were friends with Einstein and Galton and other stuff. So these were really uh, interesting people to, to read about. They were actually both of them friends with the guy, Sir William Gossett, who was from the brewery, Guinness Brewery, doing the tea test, which was quite extraordinary that he was able to be good friends with both of them because these two guys, they hated each other. Uh, because they had quite different views on the basic uh, philosophy and the way of thinking as a basis for many things, uh, also particularly stats. <coughs> anyway, it makes you sleep bad at night when you dig into those. Probably you can find a quote in a book that I like, unfortunately, that probably statistics is one of the, probably the only of the major disciplines that you are taking in your at, uh, um, education here, you do f physics, you do chemistry, you do math, you do biology maybe, you do different things, basic areas. Probably statistics is the only on, uh, big area with no safe ground under us. So we're all of us running on thin ice. But hey, I'm trying to teach you how to do it, right? Um, so come with me on the thin ice. Um, what we've done so far was to think when we tested whether B was different than A, that was also imp actually implicitly in my mind, with the alternative in my mind that it could be the null is no difference between A and B, right? The alternative could be that B is better than A, or it could be that A was better than B. I had no reason or law of nature to guide me in what could be the potential alternative to the two drug uh, medicines, uh, sorry, sleeping medicines, sleeping drugs was the same. So my natural alternative, which we should use most often, actually, I would like to emphasize that, that is the most often used alternative, also the most intelligent one in most cases, that the alternative to something being the same is that it's different. Now, when I emphasize it like that, it's because there could be, actually. There are examples, both in business, but also in science, that there could be only an alternative in one direction that makes sense or is the important part of your argument. It could be that you should prove that the only alternative to me that it's the same is that it's different in the one direction. Now that becomes a bit abstract. Let's try to make an example to make one version of this. This is a subtlety that can make some of these founders and their followers, subsequent followers quite emotional. So, but let's not get there now. Um, let's think about a classic industrial situation. Now we're back, now it's not tablets, it's computer screens. You have a claim. One of my contacts in the US is making a pretty good business out of, he has a consultancy company with a number of people high, um, employed. And he is making quite a good business in being called as expert in courts to support different companies, so-called claims support that they claim something and then other companies drag them in court and you have to be able to support by empirical uh, evidence that your claims about whether you produce creams or 
sugars or whatever you produce, you have some claims and you should be able to live up to them. And if you're in the U.S., you risk high uh, expensive uh, uh, stuff if you don't do it. And then there are people making a living of doing, helping these guys, of course, both sides. So, so that's a good place to be. Um, what if they claim that they use 83 watts? Sorry for this probably being a pretty old example in terms of real life numbers. Um, and then implied, that's the, that's the new thing now in my little example, implied that when they claim 83, they are home safe if it's smaller. So it's really a one-sided claim. It's 83 or below, really. That's their claim. But 83 is kind of the worst case. It's not above 83 would be their claim, right? Actually. Um, then there could be two different things, depending on who you are and where you are, that could turn the hypothesis in either way. Both of them one-sided, but to each, in each uh, direction. If you were the company, and that happens, that you have to prove something towards the outside world, to the agencies or whoever, if you're going to prove that you are below, you would put the hypothesis like this, because you would like to falsify, you would like to reject that you could be above, right? So that's one side that you would actually put the null, sorry, the null to be above and the alternative to be below because you want to reject the null, falsify the null. So that would be a one-sided uh, argument that should be made here, a one-sided alternative. However, if you were an external agency trying to hit the company, if you were the one to take the, make the proof that they are wrong, if that's the way it goes, that you as an, uh, some kind of agency would like to prove that they are wrong, you would put it the other way around. You would say, I would like to prove that, um, I would actually like to prove that we're above, because that's the, they have a sus suspicion, so they'd like to prove the company to be wrong. So I put the company's claim as the null and the being above as the alternative trying to prove that it's above, right, this way, by falsifying that it's below. Now we can start to become a bit upside down in our heads. Um, so let's, um, let's, uh, Let's stop it there for now and make a good break. We need that now.